so it's zero TV. Deb Rue, where are you? <laughs> oh, oh, how, how are you? To see your voice, your, your face and hear your voice. Oh, well, look, um, I'm going to just start off because this is about accessibility and inclusion. So I'm just going to introduce myself, Deb, and give a description of myself as I'm going to ask you to do the same. So for those of you who do not know me, how I how you don't at this point, I do not know. I am Caroline Casey. I'm the founder of The Valuable 500, a zero project ambassador and general all round troublemaker. And today I am sitting in the zero TV booth. Uh, I've kind of white behind me and I'm wearing, get this, a full green 1980s boiler suit just for va for the Zero Project colors. I have black glasses. I'm a white woman with very white blonde hair. And so that is me. Now, Deb, Deb, gorgeous Deb, tell us where you're dialing in from and a little bit about you and who you are. Well, thank you so much. And I am Deborah Rue. I'm a huge fan of Caroline Casey. I'm also, I, I really, really, really am a big fan of Zero Project and everything they're doing. But I'm joining from Richmond, Virginia. My husband is um, is very ill, so I was not able to travel to Vienna. But I wish I was there with all of you. And um, it's fun. It's really fun to see that we're starting to move around again. So I am wearing a teal dress and a green scarf, and I have gray hair, but also have purple all through it. So if I'm going to be old, I want to have some fun with that. And I have on green glasses. And once again, I'm joining from Virginia. Um, Deb, I, I want you to know that all of us are sending love to you and your husband. I know what a hard time it is, and to even that you find the time to to talk to us today to your zero family but we really acknowledge that so we send you love today however in a way we're sending you love a billion strong i mean look debru when you know i've been in this field for 22 years and you were one of the one of our mentors one of our trailblazers for so long before me um and you don't give up innovating. So we're not gonna talk about Rue Global or Rue Impact, we're actually gonna talk about Billion Strong. Um, and in a way, when I say to you, this is your zero family saying hello, but you're really talking about a global family um, that is over a billion strong, and it really speaks to pride and identity. Will you just tell us a little bit about what you wanna achieve with the Billion Strong? and? what your, I guess, where it came from, where it came from. Yes, yes, and, and thank you so much. And uh, I'm so excited and, and thank you, Caroline, for being one of our board members and also Michael Fimbeck um, also blessed us as one of our board members. And so did you all, speaking of families with Access Israel. So it's very exciting, but, and it sort of started with you, Caroline, because it's something I've been thinking about a long time, I, I really, I, I really wanted uh, people to take us seriously as consumers, but also as a community. And so when we saw the success that we were all having by supporting you and Paul Pullman with the, the Valuable 500, I actually started worrying a little bit about it. And I started thinking, okay, but um, we have to make sure that these employers can find us and we don't want to come out often because we're discriminated against. And so many, many people that are part of our community don't even know they're part of our community. So I was talking to um, two people, um, one of them that is at the conference today, uh, Neil um, of ATOS, and I was saying, Neil, what do y'all need at ATOS to really get ready for you know the valuable 500? And I was asking advice, and then I went to another um, company, Zebra Tech, Technologies with Kevin Bradley, and I was talking to him, and he said, Deborah, somebody needs to create the International Association of Professionals with Disabilities. And I thought, yeah, what a great idea. But then I started talking to some people, and they said, please don't name it that. And so we named it Billion Strong because there's 1.2 to 1.7 billion people with disabilities in the world, and probably more than that. But then I'm going to tell you another little story. Um, so I thought, well, I'm a seasoned CEO, so I'll be the CEO of Billion Strong. And then I thought, but then once it gets going, um, I have a perfect candidate for it. Dr. LaMondre Pugh is so talented, uh, so talented. But then I was talking to Yuval a little bit about it, and he's like, oh, great. 
another woman that doesn't look like she has, well, okay, another white woman that doesn't look like, like she has a disability is starting a disability organization. And and I really heard that because representation matters, especially in identity organization. And so I stepped back, as which was appropriate. And Dr. Lamondre Pugh is the CEO, and he's an amazing, amazing talent. But we want to bring together with pride all of us, all of us, and I, you know, as many of us as possible, so that employers can find us, so that corporations can take us serious as consumers, so that organizations, you know, can use us and hire us, so we can support our entrepreneurs with disabilities. But what we're not trying to do, Caroline, is duplicate what is already being done. We want to celebrate what Zero Project's doing. We want to celebrate the Valuable 500. We want to celebrate the disability persons organizations but we want to do it together. And I also want to make one more quick comment that people might be wondering about. We are really supporting at Billion Strong, we the 15, because everything that's being done to bring us together, I think we should all support. I think we should all get behind it and not compete with each other and just help each other move these issues forward. So thanks for that great question, Caroline. Well, I think the most important I thing is we're talking about a Billion Strong plus a billion plus strong and we are really entering this era of interconnectedness and collaboration um, and we know that we need each other because with if we work with each other as a collective voice with pride whether our disability is visible or not equally mm -hmm. as important um, it is that is when we're going to see and sort of unstoppable unignorable force for change. I want to ask you a little bit about the issue of pride. So finally, we're starting to talk about disability pride, right? I, you know, I hid my disability many years ago. We know four out of the five CEOs in the Valuable 500 who have a disability are still not disclosing. And yet the younger generation have pride. Tell us, why do you think things are changing, Deb? Why, why are we now saying with pride, this is part of my identity and owning it and loving it? Right. And I'm going to have to give the credit to the young people because yeah. I remember when my daughter, my daughter's 34 years old now, and she was born with Down syndrome. And I remember being nervous when she was going to school. I thought she would get picked on and bullied. And what really surprised me was, though, that didn't happen at all. Now, my son is around the same age. Now, he went through some of the regular stuff you see with kids being mean to each other. But Sarah was almost like off limits. The kids knew that it wasn't appropriate to bully her and that it was good to be her friend. I, I just, what I saw the energy coming from the young people at the time, and that was in the, they're, they're now in their thirties, it was really beautiful. But then now we're breaking down and I know people my age are sometimes getting a lot of heartburn by all this change. And it's like, what do you mean we have to do she, her, hers, or they, them? But maybe we have to really dig into the identity of who we really are. Is it okay for me to say I'm 63 years old? No, it's not, Deborah. Don't tell people you're old. Don't. Well, I'm 63 years old. <laughs> and maybe we need to focus on good elders, right? Yes. Support the legacy of what's coming. So I was worried about my daughter as a mother, and I myself have an invisible disability that's probably not that invisible, that I have ADHD, and anyone that knows me knows that. Um, and, but at the same time, my husband, um, traumatic brain injury, hit by a car when he was a child, but he grew up and he got married, he had two great kids, and but dementia came for him. So what it means to have a disability is that you're a human being. So I think as the young people really explore, what does it mean? And can I admit something that society has said is negative? And we hear things um, like, I, I want to say this, and then I want to say something that, that Dr. LaMondre taught me. He, I was like, this is, I hate how society treats people with disabilities. We've got to do better. We've got to do better. And he said, I hear you, Deborah, and I agree with that, but it, there's a two-pronged approach. We do have to teach society to treat us better, but we also have to, we have to understand we deserve to be treated. So it's like, we have to look um, internally at who we are. Like you said, Caroline, you hid your disability because you could, but also because society made you do it. So 
what does it look like if we really could come out with pride and talk about our lived experiences? Do y'all look at me and say, wow, her family is so messed up. She has a daughter with Down syndrome. Her husband has dementia. She is ADHD. Or do you say, well, she's got a normal family? Because it is normal. And so um, one more thing that I want to say about pride that also Caroline LaMondre, obviously the right CEO for this, um, told me was that one thing I didn't understand, even though I'm uh, uh, proud to be an ally of the LGBTQIA community, one thing I didn't understand the nuance of, though why they had so many different letters. I knew it was because they were bringing them together, but one other reason why they are doing L for lesbian, G for gay, you know, all the letters, mm -hmm. is because those are words that have been used to hurt them, and they're taking their words back. So Dr. LaMondre said he also wants to make sure that we do that in our community with pride as well. Yeah, I love that. Hold on, I gotta do a time check because I can't see the clock. Guys, am I allowed to still keep talking? Four more minutes I've got. Okay, four minutes. You see, I own the fact that I can't see very well. Um, look, I think the big thing for me right now is that is emerging. You talk about is telling stories. Our personal stories are coming out. The more stories we tell, the way people are truly willing to own every bit of themselves, good, bad, and ugly. We all have shadow and light, right? And I think one of the most powerful things that this younger generation have that we didn't have was social media. We're here talking mm. accessibility at this conference. You are a queen of social media lady. You teach me even though I'm dreadful. Can you give us some tips just as Deb Brew, how we can be inclusive in our social media, whether we're young, old, purple, whatever, go for it. Well, I, I think we need to be very authentic and transparent. And, you know, should I tell people that my husband's in hospice and I'm struggling? Well, I think we are, that's one thing we've learned during this pandemic is that we, you know, we're human beings living our lives and working and living with our families and you can't separate us all. So, I mean, you've got to, you've got to look at all of the parts of who we are. And so I think that once again, making sure that the elders like me are leaving legacies you know, I don't need to be a CEO forever. I am 63. It's not, I'm a CEO of Rue Global. We do smart cities, blah, blah, blah. But make room for others. Let's take the time to make room for others and make sure they can tell their story. So on social media, it, just be authentic and don't be mean. Don't, don't make your little nasty comments and then jump away. But Take the time to engage and learn from each other and be authentic. That's what I've done with social media and um, and and support the programs that are supporting us. Access Chat has been around for almost 10 years. We've had over 300 interviews. Um, I have human potential at work, but just go out there. Go out there and join the conversations. You're not too young to join the conversations. You're not too in inexperienced. Go out there and start talking about your life and be authentic and be kind too. That's a great point. Okay, well listen, okay. I, I can see them going, it's time to stop talking and how can you get an Irish person and Deb Bruce to stop talking? But a huge thank you. And just to completely summarize, be authentic online, make space for others, create space for others, be generous and tell your story. To the greatest storyteller, a great mentor and leader, Deb Bruce, thank you so much and congratulations on a billion strong. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. Y'all have fun at Zero Project. I'm so jealous.